In this movie, we're going to draw the outline of the main portion of the factory here using the line tool. All right, so I'll go ahead and switch over to these random lines here. Obviously, I don't want them. They're just here for the sake of demonstration. So to get rid of them, I'll go up to the Select menu and choose the All command, which has a keyboard shortcut of Control-A or Command-A on the Mac. And then I'll just go ahead and press the Backspace key or the Delete key in order to get rid of those lines. But notice that still leaves us with a Lines layer here inside the Layers panel. All right, now to create the first portion of the inclined roof of the factory, I'll go ahead and click someplace inside the right portion of the document along this horizontal guideline. And that will bring up the Line Segment Options dialog box, at which point I'll change the length value to 100 points, and we're looking for an angle value of 90 degrees, and that'll give us a line that's going straight up and down. And notice, incidentally, that you can drag this little thing here inside the angle widget in order to change that angle value on the fly. But I'm looking for 90 degrees, so I'll go ahead and enter that value and click OK, and we end up with a straight up and down line like so. It should have a nice thick stroke based on the fact that we set the line weight value to 8 points in the previous movie. Now I want you to go ahead and drag from the top of that line down and to the left like so until you see an angle value of 205 degrees. Notice that in the heads up display. And then go ahead and keep going out until you maximize that distance value. So in other words, you don't want the angle value to go all the way up to 204 degrees. If it does, just back off ever so slightly and you should end up with a distance value of 240.75 points or thereabouts. If you don't get exactly that distance, it's not really that important. We're just looking for a line that's about 240 points long. All right, so that establishes the first pair of points that we'll use to create that sort of zigzag roof. Now what we want to do is move it into place by switching back to the black arrow tool up here at the top of the toolbox. And again, recall that the black arrow tool, the first one, which Illustrator calls the selection tool, it selects entire objects, in our case, entire lines at a time. Whereas, as we'll see shortly, this next tool, the white arrow tool, which Illustrator calls the direct selection tool, allows you to select individual points. So let's start with the black arrow tool, go ahead and grab it, and then partially marquee these two lines in order to select both of them. Notice now we have what's called the bounding box inside of Illustrator. That's this rectangle with the handles around our lines. And it can be useful upon occasion. What it allows you to do is scale your selected objects as well as rotate them on the fly. So to scale, you just go ahead and drag one of these handles, as you saw me do a moment ago. To rotate, you just move your cursor slightly outside the boundary, not too far or it's not going to work, just slightly outside until you see that rotate cursor there. And then you drag in order to rotate those lines around. The thing is, there's better ways to transform objects. Scaling and rotating are known as transformations, and there's better ways to do that inside Illustrator. So if you're working along with me, just press Control-Z or Command-Z on a Mac a couple of times in my case in order to restore our original lines. And let's get rid of that bounding box because most of the time it just gets in your way by going up to the View menu and choosing Hide Bounding Box, and that will make the bounding box disappear. And the advantage is now we can drag this guy by its lower left point, this so-called anchor point right there, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do it. If we still had the bounding box, I'll go ahead and turn it back on just to make my point here. If I tried to drag from that point right there, then I would end up scaling the lines, which is not what I want. I just want to move them. So I'll go ahead and press Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac to undo. Then I'll return to the View menu and choose Hide Bounding Box to turn it off. And I'll go ahead and drag this point right there until it snaps into alignment with the intersection of those two center guides. And you'll know you have a snap because the color of your arrowhead will change from black, which indicates you're just dragging things around here, to white, which indicates that you have a full-blown snap. And that's what guides do. They snap objects into alignment inside of your illustration, at which point you can release to put those lines exactly where they need to be. All right, so that's how you draw and align two straight lines here inside Illustrator. In the next movie, we'll duplicate those lines to create the rest of the zigzag roof.